2007. I'd like to call the meeting to order and please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam Clerk, the roll please. Mayor Birchall? Here. District 1 Morse? Here. District 2 Yaku? Here. Here. District 4 Weiland. Here. District 5 Highland. Here. District 6 Bansville. Here. At this point in the uh, agenda, we take comments and suggestions from the uh, audience on items not in on today's uh, agenda. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak to the council? One more time. Yes. Please come on up. State your name and address and give us your input, please. I'm Diane Vona, and my address is 1034 Highway 35 in North Hudson. I just want to find out uh, what is the City Council's um, stand on having music played in the street like an, um, a troubadour, um, maybe having music uh, or um, an amplifier outside on the building having some music played on the street as well. Okay. We can't really answer that question right now, but okay. we can s set you up with uh, some, uh, David Gray or David uh, can talk to you a little bit about, well, I guess he'd be building inspection. It'd be probably or be. Denny, or it depends on the situation. Okay. So you need to maybe get it on the agenda, talk in the planning okay. department or what you're proposing. All right. Okay. I'm just uh, looking ahead in case I do find the building. Okay. I just want to find out if there's somewhere I could just put okay. uh, musicians outside or just put an amplifier outside. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Sir. Is there anyone else that would like to speak to the council? All right. At this time, if it's okay with the council, I'd like to just do that little bit of a change in the uh, order. Uh, I'd like to do a proclamation first so that uh, Mr. Depoy can uh, leave early if he so desire. <laughs> uh, Pancreatic Cancer Awareness Month. Whereas in 2011, an estimated 44,030 people will be diagnosed with pancre pancreatic cancer in the United States, and 37,660 will die from the disease. And whereas pancreatic cancer is one of the deadliest cancers and the fourth leading cause of death in the United States, approximately 730 deaths will occur in Wisconsin in 2011. And whereas when symptoms of pancreatic cancer present themselves, it is usually too late for an optim optimistic prognosis. And 74% of the cancer patients die within the first year of their diagnosis, while 94% of pancreatic cancer patients die within the first five years. And wh whereas there is no cure for the cancer, there has been no significant improvement in survival rates for the last 40 years. The federal government invests significantly less money in pancreatic cancer research than it does in any other leading cancer killers, and the cancer research continues to only approximately 2% of the National Cancer Institute's federal research funding, a figure far too low given the severity of the disease, its mortality rate, and how little is known about how to arrest it, and where the Pancreatic Cancer Action Network is, is the first and only national patient advocacy organization that serves the pancreatic cancer community in Wisconsin and nationwide by focusing its efforts on public policy, research funding, and patient services. The public awareness and education related to the development of effective treatments and a cure for this cancer. And whereas the Pan Pancreatic Cancer Action Network supports those patients currently battling pancreatic cancer, as well as those who have lost their lives to the disease, are committed to nothing less than a cure. I, Mayor Alan D. Birchall, there de therefore declare November, 11, or November 2011 as Pancreatic Cancer Awareness Month in the city of Hudson and call upon its citizens to, ra to raise their awareness about the disease, early detection, and research on causes and effective treatment and the cure for this disease. Dan, I'd, I've got a couple uh, proclamations for you that you can utilize, and if you have a, 
anything you'd like to say, you're more than welcome to address the council. Great, thank you. Well, thanks for your work on this project. Thank you so much, Mayor. I appreciate sure. it. You want to get a quick picture? Okay, sure, that'd be fine. Wish <laughs> <laughs> so you could operate that. Sure, sure. Step to the microphone. Give your name and address, please. Uh, good evening, Council. My name is uh, Dan Dupuy, 305 Canyon Boulevard, Hudson. And on behalf of the Pancreatic Cancer Action Network, I just would like to sincerely thank all of you, especially Mary and uh, Mary Allen Birchall, for your efforts and just uh, bringing awareness of this deadly disease um, to the community. I was personally impacted by this here just a few months ago, uh, having a brother diagnosed with it. He was uh, given two weeks to two months when he was first diagnosed, and he uh, ended up actually living six six months. So um, makes an individual uh, very much grateful for every day we have. And I guess my words of wisdom are enjoy every day, appreciate uh, what the good Lord has given us all, and uh, know that uh, tomorrow is never guaranteed for any of us. So again, Mayor, thank you uh, very much for your efforts here. It's uh, greatly appreciated. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Madam Clerk, uh, consent agenda. To approve the regular meeting minutes and closed session minutes of October 3rd, 2011. To approve claims for payment in the amount of $325,046.95. The detailed description is available in the clerk's office on request and is posted on the city's website. To approve the issuance of a secondhand article and secondhand jewelry dealer's license to Jeffrey Parsons doing business as THR and Associates to be used November 1st, through 5th, 2011 at the Best Western Hudson House Inn, 1616 Crestview Drive. To approve the issuance of a Class B beer license to Fiesta Loca LLC, 131 Carmichael Road, contingent on successful building and fire inspections, receipt of the restaurant license, and timely startup within 90 days of council approval. To approve the issuance of a taxicab driver's license to Richard M. Erdman, 1537 100th Street, New Richmond, Wisconsin, through June 30th, 2012. To approve the 2012 Hot Air Affair event, February 3rd through 5th, 2012, and the Up, Up, and Away 5K run on February 4th, 2012. To approve the Halloween movie event and Haunted Trail event in Lakefront Park on October 29th, 2011, with the security deposit to be charged and refunded if no damage occurs. Excuse me, Nancy. Marty is indicating. That should have been removed from the agenda. Item two? Correct. Okay. To approve the Susan Capon one mile and 5K benefit walk on October 22nd, 2011, beginning and ending at the Hudson Middle School. To approve the Chamber of Commerce 2011 Christmas Tour of Homes to be held November 18th, 19th, and 20th, 2011. To approve the 2012 Council Meeting Dates as proposed by the City Administrator and City Clerk. To approve the 2011 Fall Yard Waste Collection Dates from October 22nd through November 5th, 2011 as presented. To schedule a public hearing for Monday, November 7th, 2011 at 6.55 p.m. regarding the request to rezone 1.25 acres at the southwest quadrant of Crestview Drive and Higgins Street from Public District to RM1 multi, Multiple Family Residential District and to amend the City of Hudson Comprehensive Master Plan 2030 Land Map Use Designation from Public to Medium Density Residential to place on file the quarterly reports of the Police Chief, Fire Chief, and Building Inspector monthly report from the finance officer and the October 11, 2011 minutes of the Public Utilities Commission and the October 10, 2011 minutes of the St. Croix EMS Commission. Move for approval. Second. <coughs> yes. 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 First order of business is the application of operator's license. We have three that go from uh, October 19th, 2011 to June 30th, 2013. Donovan Nyland, Thomas Tresmer III, Tricia uh, uh, Wenzel. Mr. Mayor, I recuse myself. Okay. Move to approve the operator's license. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Item seven, update on 2012 budget. Mr. Welling. 
Um, the Finance Committee met, has met several times. At this point, they have re reduced any expenditures and making some other changes. We, they have the budget where it meets the required levy. I will be finishing up a formal budget package for all the council members. Hopefully, I'll have those, hopefully, maybe even by the end of this week. Public hearing will be on November 21st, prior to the council meeting. Um, viewing copies will be available. As I mentioned in the Finance Committee, changes can be made to it between now and the actual public hearing. We just need to get publish it a certain number of days prior to the public hearing. So once you get the budget packets, if you have questions for me or the Finance Committee, just let us know. And I'll give everybody a call when they're ready. Any questions? Okay, again, I, as I did in uh, our Finance Meeting, I want to thank the Finance Department for, or the Finance uh, Committee for all their hard work. It's not, it's not an easy task. and. The rest of the council will get a chance to take a look at what we've done and make recommendations. All right. No, if there's no other questions, let's move on to update on projects. Well, we've had a lot of activity going on out here lately, so it's exciting to see everything happening. But uh, 2011 mill and overlay, we're basically done with that. Just some minor cleanups going on. Grandview Park uh, storm sewer, they're installing the storm sewer. They got the whole area clear and grub. And uh, they had a little problem with some of the equipment, so they were shut down for a day, but they're working out there. Lakefront Park bathhouse, uh, they're installing. We're actually putting in like a five foot deep sheet piling to help when the river goes up high. And Zappa is hitting a lot of debris in that area, concrete, boulders, uh, sidewalks. I guess it used to be a, an old warehouse or junkyard area, and they're finding it. Uh, White Camp Park pathway improvements, they paved the path yesterday. And I'm going to quote Tom Zuli on what we talked about before. All he said was, cool. <laughs> right, Tom? <laughs> Uh, the forestry project, uh, the update on that management plan, she's uh, continuing to do the uh, inventory. Vine Street reconstruction, we're working. Can I ask a question about the tree? Did, were they out Sunday? I they have somebody out Sunday, uh, inventory tree. Did anybody else see that? She said she was going to be working all weekend. Okay. All right. Sorry. Oh, no problem. Uh, Vine Street, if you drive up there between 9th and, and down to the river, you're going to see utility markings out there, and that's part of the study. We want to make sure there's going to be uh, there's no big utility that could be an issue when we uh, do the construction when that happens. So, if a resident calls concerned that we're going to be digging up the road, it's just part of the planning process. So there'll be no digging on the road. For the uh, private developments on Comfort Street Suites, the restoration of Center Drive has been completed, and then Comfort of Homes 2011, the concept development plans have been reviewed, and then just yesterday we received the final development plans. So, are there any questions? How do you how do you think the uh, the uh, mill and overlay or mill and overlay went? I think that project went really well okay um there was some things that we found after we milled the road that we thought we could find like you could see gravel patches and we were concerned about that possibly happening because the street cores for example on cooley the street cores varied from like two inches to five and a half inches and so we knew when we milled we there was a good possibility we were going to get some exposed gravel which we did but we put a leveling course on that before, and I think the uh, bathhouse parking lot looks really good with the job there. So. Okay. Any questions? Okay. Thank you. Next, we have amendments to Chapter 235, Parking Regulation, Ordinance Number 17-11. <coughs> who's uh, who's on this one? Uh, Everybody has, this is an addition or a change to where we, we talked about it before. Lori, first we had the yeah. first reading, this is the second reading. Any questions on this? Tom, you wanna make a comment on it, please? I noticed on the issue sheet, and I think we talked about this in public works that uh, I believe we discussed on Third Street, uh, according to this issue sheet, that um, 
the parking ordinance would be from on the west side from Locust to Walnut. Actually, I like to, it should read, or I'd like to have it changed to include both sides from Walnut to Vine Street. Um, this whole area is, you know, all the parking stalls are all painted, and uh, this area should be, I'd like to see it considered as a downtown area. Um, as people uh, in the 4th Street area, uh, I think last year was exempted from the uh, parking ordinance, so um, people would move down to this 3rd Street to park overnight, and it just wouldn't allow us to get any of the snow plowing done. Um, I'd like to have it so at least no parking from 2.30 to 4.30, so we, like, you know, it'd be the same, it'd be consistent with the downtown area. Because you guys do plow downtown first. Yes. So where will the people on 4th or on Walnut where they were moving down to park somewhere? Cause they had Either to in the parking lots or they'll have to move, you know, up to 4th Street for sure. Maybe that would work. But they'll still get their exemptions, but they have to park on a different street. Yeah, and then, you know, we do have, you know, dirt for the application for exemptions, you know, we, we're putting on there that um, uh, odd even parking so we can at least have, you know, all the vehicles on one side or the other. So right. that's that, so that we started have, last year. Right. Yeah. So if you have an exemption, then you have to follow odd even for the exempted people. Okay. That makes, that's logical. Is that clear to everyone? Yeah. The other thing is that not only for snow plowing is, but as we talk about you know, all our stormwater issues downtown, is that there's, so, there's a lot of parking on 3rd Street and Locust Street and Walnut Streets, and this is one of the biggest areas that we have issues with stormwater. So it's not only gonna help us uh, th through the winter months, but it's gonna also help us when we do our street sweepings and uh, things like that in early mornings, so. Okay, any questions for Tom? How is it, I, I didn't follow that. How is it gonna help your early mornings in that's, the summertime? Uh, that's when we run the street sweeper. The downtown is we always start at four in the morning. So we do the downtown area. So if the vehicles are parked on Third Street, Walnut, Locust, and these areas that um, it's, we just don't get the, those areas swept. Oh, I see. So you want this to be year round. Year round if, if I'm just bringing up the discussion, it would okay. be very beneficial. It is year it round. Is round. Yeah, I thought we were just yeah. talking about so I it, read it as year round. Yep. Well, it doesn't say not year round. Well, it's always been year round. Yeah, right. But we were talking about snow plowing. But we've been talking about snow plowing and Sorry. Right. Yeah. That's okay. types of things. So you're saying all parking stalls, no parking, 2.30 to 4.30, including all those on 3rd Street and on Walnut Street. That'd be very, very helpful for us to do our work. Okay. Uh, yes. I, um, I think last time it was proposed a $25 initial application fee for the exemption. And so the council, it should be reflected in the minutes since it's not in the ordinance. If okay. that's what the council wants to do, establish that as the fee. The $25 only if they've not applied before. Yeah, the initial, right. the ordinance reads, I thought the new ordinance. Yeah, an initial non-refundable fee. Mm -hmm. So that's covered in the ordinance. Mm -hmm. But the amount wasn't. But the amount wasn't, which is okay, but we want it reflected in the minutes that the council is determining it to be $25, if that's what, what you want. It would not be part of the ordinance. No. Right. right. Because then, then it's easier yeah, to change it. Right. Correct. Yeah, that's fine. Can so, I, go ahead. Can I just ask a question, Tom? The street changing that you want that we use thinking about, the odd even parking and the, it's, that's only set for the winter time is the odd even parking. So are those that don't have any place else to park going to be able to park odd even during the summertime too, if that's where they. Only for exemptions. Right, only but the that. exemption is only for those months of the snow plowing months. Yep. It's not set up for all year round the exemption. Correct. So those homes would have to have the exemption set up for all year round is, is what I'm. How I'm thinking. Ask them to be, if you're going to ask them, to, what she's saying, if you're going to ask them to be off the street, right. but, but this, year these streets will be two, no parking 2:30 to 4:30. The streets that we have listed all year round. All year round. But, but we don't have a we don't have a snow event, so people will park any place else. There's no odd even parking during the summertime. That's just the winter. I understand that, but he's requesting that all year round, they're not parked in those stalls 
between 2.30 and 4.30. I'm just, I don't know the streets by heart, but from sounds like from looking at you, you have a concern because I'm assuming that some of those people don't have off-street parking. Yeah, there's a lot. There's so where a are park. they going to park in the summertime right. from 2.30 to 4.30 is my question. On they other need, streets. They're going to have to park on 4th Street. Fourth street it's just not on these. But in the wintertime, they have an odd even exemption. So can't we allow them to have an odd even exemption in the summertime too? Why do we have Possibly. to make them want, I mean, granted it's summer, it's fine, but if we're, I'm just trying to yeah. make it convenient yeah, I, for them, but if, I see you know, what you mean. is I, anyone I, hearing my <coughs> Yeah, I, I understand what you're okay. saying. Plus, I mean, you don't run the street cleaner every night. No. Right? Generally it's Fridays and Mondays and Fridays. So you know, we could limit it to that. I mean, you wouldn't have to. I know it gets I, too just, I don't think, I think it's unnecessary. I guess. Well, how many people are parking in that area that would have to not be able to park in front of their own home or yeah. where they live? And that's and I, I know of the the people on Walnut. There's a couple of people there that park there because that's. I don't want to make this park. complicated. Yeah. My my suggestion is just that if we're granting exemptions in the winter time, for 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 anyone who has an exemption in the winter, obviously has a parking problem all year round. Their parking problem is not just in the winter. So why can't we have those exemptions be all year round? Because you're not just street sweeping Fourth Street. You street sweep all these streets. So if we're going to give the exemption, why can't it be odd even parking all year round if, For you know. For those areas. Right. I'm, I'm just, I don't think that's making it too complicated. If they're receiving an exemption, they're just, their exemption is staying that you will park odd even if you're street parking. And the major, the major street here impacted is 3rd Street from City Hall to Vine, right? That would be, you know, if we could keep that year round and then Wallet and Locust <laughs> Street maybe do what uh, Mary says. I mean, the confusion. You'll, got, you'll have to change the language of the ordinance. Right, I understand that. I'm just, you know. I'm going to move that we approve the ordinance the way it is. I'm sorry, but I, I just don't want to okay. complicate it. And if there's. Would you like to add the opinions, $25 fee? Yeah, for that's first fine. And then the change from. Um, to both sides of the street? Yeah, both sides third? of 3rd uh, Street from Walnut to Vine. Is there a second? I'll second it. Okay, now any other discussion? Um, Tom, when you, when you thought about doing that, I haven't been, out, been on 3rd Street middle of the night. How, how many cars do we have on here who regularly use this as their parking place in front of their homes? Generally, it's uh, the one on the Bryan House and between the, uh, that'd be between Locust and Vine. Yep. There's usually several cars there, and then there's a few be, you know, in front of the apartment buildings. Because you've got the apartment building that doesn't have parking, and you have them that doesn't, I mean, both of those basically are multiple The apartment building does have parking in the back. Yeah. And the O'Brien no. House does have parking. They have a garage, and they have a driveway in the back also. There's also a parking lot. Uh, the bank parking lot is a bl half a block away. And, and then there's the park actually there parking, right. parking uh, right in behind the old post office. There is a, you know, available spots there. There's at least six or eight spots right there, isn't there? So there they, are. They can park in City Hall parking lot, or they can park behind the bank, right? And mm -hmm. both of those are within a half a block. Yes. Okay. Yeah. What's the twenty-five dollar fee for? Just for an exemption. Up? For the exemption, is that just to apply for an exemption it takes time, or? Yeah, I mean, Tom goes out there. He'll meet with the homeowners in some cases, and he's looking for you know where there is parking available or not. And that's why we're saying if they're granted the exemption and they come back the next year, we don't need to go out. There's not a fee charged. So one time upfront mm -hmm. cost. Anything else? Randy, anything? It's one time unless you're applying. I mean, maybe someone got rejected last year and they're going to apply again because they were not granted an exemption last year and they gotcha. have to reapply. You have to re-review. Mm -hmm. yep. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, reappointment of Steve Wilcox to the St. Croix County Economic Development Board. His term expires in January, and he's agreed to serve another three years <coughs> if you so desire. Move but to approve. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, any alter person have any items Could for I, future agenda? <coughs> just get a follow-up on uh, this parking stall on uh, Walnut here. Which was what AT&T's problem, Tom? I, 
If you want it, since it's not on the agenda. No, I think it's it's probably projects. With, we, update, on projects. update on projects. <laughs> <laughs> How about that? Well, we have a parking stall that is collapsing over on, right? Yeah, right down here. I have met with uh, um, AT&T, a representative from AT&T. It is on uh, the schedule to, to get um, worked on this fall yet. Um, actually, from the structure, the manhole in the street, you can see where it's uh, sunk. Actually, the pipe was, it's clay pipe that, according to their records, was installed in 1927. Um, they would like to excavate from that manhole down toward 2nd Street and put uh, new piping in. And then from that uh, structure, they are going to go toward the alley where the um, curb and gutter is sank and repair all that. So um, I've called him several times, and he's, he's supposed to be getting done that's this year. That's right. Just keep on them. I'd like to see it done before I'll give him a call tomorrow, yes. Okay. Anyone else? Yeah, I've got an uh, update. Sorry, uh, Lee. Um, the City of Hudson Urban Forestry Tree Program uh, has an opportunity for us to, let's see if I get this right here. Um, if I buy a tree for 100, around $150, the city will donate another tree for our fall planting program. Uh, I believe there's a copy of this on our website. It's the Trees Pay Us Back, Buy One, Get One, uh, Help Promote Urban Forestry. Um, you had mentioned uh, it's Kelly out doing a tree inventory. We're looking at all of the, um, specifically ash trees, but we're actually inventorying all trees in public spaces in the city of Hudson. We do have a tremendous amount of ash trees. For those that don't know, Emerald Ash Borer has now been, um, is in St. Paul. So we're trying to manage our, uh, not only trees at risk, but then we're gonna be planting new trees with diversity so that we don't have uh, significant uh, problems in the future. So um, we've got a little sheet here. There's one on the website. So buy a tree for 150 and the city will match funds to, uh, for this fall's uh, tree planting program. Good. It's exciting, trees are awesome. Yes, they are. <laughs> We've got a grant from the Rotary Club of Hudson. Part of the funds that we're utilizing is a grant that we received from the Hudson Rotary Club. <laughs> Lee? Okay. I have a couple things. Uh, so with a great deal of regret, I accept the uh, resignation of David Smith from the library board. And so we're looking for a replacement. So I've, I've talked to, I think David resigned last Monday night. So if there's any, I know Randy has given me a couple names and if there's anyone else that has an interest in serving on the library board that you could recommend, give me a call and I'll be talking with those people. I've had a couple recommendations and I've had a couple calls from people. So um, hopefully by next meeting I'll, so we could have someone in place for their November meeting. So let me know if you have anybody in mind. Um, update on the stormwater utility, uh, Neil and uh, Devon and Tom, and there's been quite a few people trying to put their fingers on the uh, stormwater utility that we make, may or may not come back to this full council and then finance about, but I think we're, we're, we're moving forward to at least make a presentation to you folks to take a look at. So we're working on that right now. Next Monday, uh, a meeting with Sheila Harsdorf Denny and I and Dean Knudsen are meeting with the DOT officials on the um, Tourism Information Center. What the uh, their their plan is or lack of plan is. <coughs> so, we'll I'll keep you updated on that where we're at and where we're going with that and what their plans are. I know they put it up for bid. I believe they pulled it off yesterday, the bid list. So, for your information. Uh, Denny has been, Denny Darnold has been working really hard with the Uline folks. We're trying to get our final development agreement put together so that we can uh, hopefully announce that they will be coming to Hudson and they, they're trying to get closed before the end of the month. Uh, the bank uh, had been taken over by FDIC and they'd like to get it closed before the end of the month. So we're working on that. And that's all I had. City Administrator. Nothing. City Attorney. Nothing. Is there a motion to adjourn? I'll move to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. We're adjourned. Thank you very much.